Hi, this is Anne with Graphic Design How To, and today I'm going to show you how to add variable images and text with Adobe InDesign Data Merge. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first I want to show you the end result so you'll know if this tutorial is right for you. Basically, you'll have a folder with a lot of different photos in it that you want to put into a document, and you want InDesign to pull the pictures and text from a spreadsheet like this that lists the photo locations, um, the title of the photo, and then the photographer name or something similar. And then this will become something like this, where each photo is here pulled from the spreadsheet and then the title of the photo is below it with the photographer below that. So if that's the type of thing you wanna do, this tutorial will show you how to do it. So first, you'll have to set a few things up before getting started with InDesign. You'll need a folder with all the images that you want to include. And the photos that I'm using in this tutorial, I just got from Google Image Search. Um, those are the ones that popped up. And they are not my photos or any ones that I know. They're just for this tutorial. Now I'm in Google Sheets. And if you're not familiar with Google Sheets, it's basically a free online spreadsheet that you can get by having a Gmail account. You can also do this with Excel, but I've heard of people having trouble getting a CSV saved from Excel to work in InDesign. So if you're having trouble with your Excel file, you can just copy that information into Google Sheets and then save it from a CSV file from here. The first row in your spreadsheet is important. So if I click on uh, cell A1, I have an apostrophe and then an at symbol and then the word image with no spaces. So apostrophe, at symbol, image. That will tip off InDesign that everything under this is going to be an image file. The next row over, I've got my next category, which is called image title. And I can title this anything I want. And then the next one is photographer. So row number one, you don't do anything to format it, but InDesign knows that row number one will not actually be put into the InDesign document. And it's just sort of category titles here. Now the way to format your images, first you'll want a slash, and this is the same key as your question mark in case you're having trouble finding it on your keyboard. Then you'll want the folder name. So as you can see, my folder name is photos here. So that's where photos is coming from. Then another slash and then the image title. So this download one JPEG is right here, download one JPEG. All of these are the exact names of the photos inside that folder. For image title, you can have any title that you want for your images. I just decided to make it the same as the photo name. And then for the photographer, these are all fake names that I made up. So whatever the photographer's names are, you can put them here. Now, when you save your InDesign file, you'll want to save it right out here like I did. Here's the sample that I was using. So when it's going to look for those photos, the slash means it's going to search this same location that the document is in. And then it'll see photos and then it'll see the names of the photos. So if you move this InDesign document out of here, it's not going to know where this photos folder is. You kind of need to keep these two things together. I only have three columns, but you can add as many as you need for whatever variable data you have. And once you're done formatting your spreadsheet, you'll want to save this as a CSV file. So we'll go to file, download, and then comma separated values, which is the CSV. So we'll save that and it'll come right down into my downloads. In Excel, this is going to be something like file, save as, CSV or something like that. It might even be export as. So I've got my photos sheet one down here in downloads and I'm just gonna click and pull this up here into my other folder along with my InDesign document and my photos. I already had one in there, but I'm gonna override it. Okay, so now we've got all the things we need. We've got our photos here, we've got our CSV file, and now we can go to InDesign and create a new document. So I'll click on it and I'll create new. I'm gonna come up here to print and then choose letter. I also don't want facing pages, so I'm gonna uncheck that. I only want one page here. Everything's in pica, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it to inches, just so you can see it's an eight and a half by 11. We've got one page, and we want start to be number one also. 
and I'm going to leave these things alone. So we'll say create. Okay, next I'm going to get my pages up. Now if you don't see this, you can come up here to Window, Pages, and all the other windows that I have open here will be located under Window 2. And you'll notice that your first page is blue. This is your regular page, but we don't really want this right now. We want to go to the A Master. So double click on the A Master to get into Master Pages mode. Now first I'm going to add a rectangle frame for our photo. So I'll click rectangle frame and then I'm just going to click and drag. I'm only going to make one image box and two text boxes, one for each column in the spreadsheet, and I'm going to let InDesign figure out how many will fit on a page. Okay, so I've got my frame here for the photo. Now I'm going to click on my text box and just draw a text box underneath. This will be for the title or the name of the photo. And then I'm going to grab another text box and put it underneath that. And this one will be for the photographer, which is column three. We'll move this one up a little bit. And now I'll double click on page one to get back out of that mode. When we do that, we won't be able to select anything on here because it's coming from the master page. But we need to be able to select it to kind of tell InDesign what column to pull from the spreadsheet. So to do that, hold Shift and Command on a Mac and double click the first box. On a PC, that Shift and Control and double click. Now we need to access the data on our spreadsheet. So to do that, I'll go to Window, Utilities, and Data Merge. We've got some instructions here, but I'm just going to walk you through the process. I'll click on this little three lines fly out here and choose Select Data Source. And now I'm back here in my folder with all my information and I can see the CSV file right up here at the top. I'll click it and choose Open. And now we can see the three columns are listed here and this is coming from row one of the spreadsheet. So for this box that we just double clicked, I'm going to click on the image. You can see that it's put a dotted line outside of it and then given us a variable data image indication. Now let's get back on our master page by double clicking there. And I'm going to go ahead and add text in here. I'm going to type title of the image here. I'm going to come to my character palette and just make this text a little bit bigger. And I'll come to the paragraph to center it. Now I'll click in the second text box and type photographer. And I'll highlight that by hitting Command A or Control A on my keyboard. That's select all. And then I'm going to get my eyedropper and just click on this text. So this has made it centered and also the same text as the other piece. We could also change our font here and all that, but since this is just a tutorial, I'm going to leave it alone. So we're still up here in A Master, and now we need to go back to our page. Now I'll hold Shift and Command or Shift and Control on a PC and double click the title of the image text box, which will put my cursor in it. And then I'll select all with Command A or Control A and click Image Title in Data Merge. And it'll change it to indicate that this is pulling from the spreadsheet. I'll get back on my selection tool and do the same thing with this one. Now we have data from all three columns in our InDesign document. So now I'm going to come down here on the Data Merge window and choose Preview. And now we can see we've got the title of this one, we've got the photographer, and we've got the image itself up here. We could even come over here and kind of scroll through all the different images and their information. Okay, so the next step is to come up here and click this little button, which is Create Merge Document. I'll click that, and that'll bring up this dialog box. So first, we'll look at the records to merge. We want to make sure this is on all records. And then for the records per document, we want multiple records so that it puts them all on one page. And we can preview that right here. Okay, and you can see that there's not space between these right now. We're also not able to fit a third row down here. So let's go into multiple record layout. I want to increase the space between the columns just to give them a little bit of breathing room. So I'm going to highlight that area and then use my arrow keys to just space them out a little bit. I'm also going to come up here to Options and choose Fill Frames Proportionally so that the top and bottom of this will be filled with the image. And what this will do, it'll actually cut off the sides, which is fine for this because I really want it to be kind of like a, a thumbnail view of what the image is. So I'll choose Fill Frames Proportionally. Okay, and that's looking really nice. 
Now to get another row on here, we're going to have to adjust how this is laid out. So I'm going to cancel and then I'm going to click on my text box here and just shorten it up a little bit. And I'll move this one up so that it's closer. Now when we go ahead and merge and choose multiple records and preview, we're able to fit all nine on one page. And now we can go in and add our spacing and all of that. I'm going to add a little more between the rows too. Okay, and this looks perfect. I'll need to go back into options and choose fill frames proportionally, and then we'll say okay. We'll get this dialog box. This means that none of the text was long enough to go outside the text frames, so that's a good thing. But if there were text that flowed outside the frame, it would tell us where to find that so we could just make that text a little bit smaller. So we'll say okay. And now we can see our pages have generated all of the images in the spreadsheet. And let's see how this looks without guides. So I'm just gonna hit W on my keyboard and it's looking pretty nice. Now InDesign has made a new document for us. So I'll wanna save this one as something like merged document. Um, now I have the InDesign file and I think I'll also export this as a PDF. So I'll come to file, export, and then we'll choose Adobe PDF and I'll call it merge doc also. We'll save that. High quality print is a good one and we'll export. And here's the PDF. So if your layout is not looking too great, just cancel and make adjustments in the master page or in the regular page and then retry the data merge. All right, if you like this video, please click on the like button and I'll see you in a couple days with another graphic design video. Thank you.